I love you, Dad. Welcome, Daddios, to the Indie Dads Podcast, where all dads in Central Indiana come to become stronger and better dads. We're going to pump iron mentally and learn about ourselves and about our community. So let's get in to this week's show. This week, we have a great conversation with John Acton, an indie dad that has more than 30 years experience working with kids in the education field at various levels and has in the past couple of years have his life changed dramatically and changed how he views being a dad. Let's get in to today's conversation. John, thank you so much for joining us today. And we're we're gonna go through through a lot of things, but what we want to kind of start out with is just kind of maybe how you found found out you were gonna be a dad or the story around the birth or in any kind of interesting aspects of the starting out your fatherhood. Sure. Uh, well, one, thank you for having me. I, I think it's a really, uh, a really important message and a, a service you're providing. So I'm, I've been a dad twice and um, so it's the most important thing I've ever done in my life. Um, my, my oldest son is now 14 and um, he is a full-blown teenager uh, with all their uh, uh, idiosyncrasies. Um, and uh, his name is Jack. He's a, he's an eighth grader. And um, I call him the surprise baby, who's now seven. Uh, you can tell by the gray hair, um, the surprise baby wasn't the plan. And um, uh, the neat thing about it is God really doesn't care about our plans, right? It's, it's on his time. So uh, Andrew is our, our surprise baby, now seven, and he's the first creator. And uh, uh, I, I would tell you that the first week uh, that my wife, told me that we were having Andrew. I think I just walked around the entire time saying, you're what? Uh, and, and, and I can't imagine um, my life without these, these two blessings. Um, like I said, I, I, uh, we will talk about it later. I've had lots of different jobs and career paths and different things and, and uh, had some opportunities to do some pretty cool things, but there's nothing been, been as cool um, as having uh, two two little sets of eyes look at me and call me dad. Yeah, that's, that's so, so true. You know, you, know, you can have a great, your dream job or whatever it is you want, but nothing really compares to being a dad. And that's, I don't know, yeah. that's, that's something you don't really realize until you kind of dive into it. And you, you mentioned kind of the surprise baby. What's, what's been the biggest surprise for you as, you know, becoming a father, like you didn't expect to happen or kind of your journey? Sure. I, you know, um, I was a teacher in education for my entire career. So uh, for a long, a large portion of my life, you know, I, I uh, work with other people's kids and, you know, I, and I liked them, you know, you, you say you loved some of the students you had. And so I was a role football coach, loved our players, but, but it wasn't the same. It's not the same as when it's yours. And, and, and that kind of the light switch flipped. And um, then you really kind of understand that, the, the love you can really have for someone, you know, it, it, um, then it made much more sense to me the parents of our students and parents of players that I had, um, their passion for their kids. And, and we were always on the same page, always trying to do the best for our, our students and players. But, um, when it's your own, it's, it's just different. And, and I, I don't know if that, that shouldn't have been surprising to me, but I just think it's one of those aspects of life and, and until you do it, uh, you can read all the books, you can watch all the movies, you can listen to all the podcasts, you can read Dr. Spock books as much as you want a until you have that, that child put in your arms for the very first time. I, I'm not sure it quite makes sense. And uh, uh, I'll say it makes sense. Then it's just a constant spin of, I don't know what the heck I'm doing, right? <laughs> and as soon as you become a dad. Yeah, it's, it, it is a huge emotional thing and like, you know, I, I've worked with kids, you know, a lot as well. And it's just different when it's, it's yours. It's <laughs> like, you can love those kids and you, you know, you wish the best, you try to do the best for them, but it's just like, 
completely changes when it's yours and like you have that responsibility for them and everything that comes with that. It's just, just takes over your, your life basically. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, my, I, uh, my oldest son, Jack, again, not 14, um, he was a Riley baby, um, Riley hospital kid. So he, Jack has a condition called Dandy Walker syndrome. Um, if, if you, if I didn't say it to someone that no one would know, but he, uh, it's basically it's hydrocephalus on, on the, the brain. He had too much fluid. Um, constantly uh, on the brain. So or, uh, I think even before he turned one, uh, a shunt was put in, inside uh, his skull, which constantly drains fluid. Um, and, and so you go from one end of the pendulum to the next, um, you find out this kind of news as a, as a you know, uh, beginning dad. And uh, he, he has... Uh, exceeded any expectations you know he's just a normal teenager the same kid that's gonna leave his socks in the middle of the room for no apparent reason um but you know like you talk about the surprises um we all think we're gonna have a uh, everything's gonna go perfectly you know you have a child he's born 10 fingers 10 toes everything's working well we knew um early that there was gonna be a potential situation um and it, it's the amount of blessings to have uh, jack with us and, and wouldn't know um, that there's been any, uh, any aspect of guarding his health. Um, he can't do some contact sports. Uh, and I'm a little football coach, so we kind of maneuver around that. But other than that, um, he, you know, those surprises in life are, here's a challenge, how you got to overcome it, and, and teaching our, our kids to do the same. Yeah, and kind of um, had a similar situation where our daughter – you know, they couldn't find a kidney when they did the ultrasound. Oh, and wow. She, uh, you know, just, it didn't grow into what it needed to be, but she's fine and she's, you know, doing great. But yeah. just that one one little thing and, you know, which was real worrisome before, you know, she was here and everything, but I haven't had any side effects. And that's great. And it's great to hear that your son, you know, it's doing great, especially after having surgery at such a young age. Yeah. It's always scary. I couldn't even imagine really. <laughs> yeah. A little stressful, but uh um, and, and now, you know, where things are now, it's hard to even remember sometimes that, um, my son has a, has this condition in a never go away. Right. But, um, you know, kids are so adaptive and, and overcome and, and uh, I'm, it's great news to hear that about your daughter. Uh, mm -hmm. I know it had to be worrisome for you, for you guys. Yeah. That's a, that's a, uh, a kind of, uh, worry that, that again, you can't explain to non-fathers. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's. Just takes over everything, really. So, can you mentioned a little bit of your career background? How how has your career kind of affected your fatherhood? Um, so, I have a my my story is a little bit different, maybe than than some of your viewers. And and um, so for for thirty years, I I was an educator. Uh, I was a teacher. Uh, I was a football coach. Uh, became a uh, high school principal. Um, in my last position, I was a uh, school superintendent and um, had all those you know, transitioned. Uh, uh, it was last July, July 1st is when um, I was forced to medically retire um, from the field of education. Um, two years ago, I, I was lucky enough uh, to be diagnosed with uh, stage three rectal cancer. And that changed the trajectory of, uh, of everything. And, um, you know, we, we went through the treatments and we, we continued to fight this, this thing. But um, it, it came to a point that it, grudgingly finally listening to our doctors say, you know, you, you need to, you, you need to retire. You, you, your body has got to try to recover from all this treatment. So um, what we've had to do is reinvent ourselves. Um, and, and so we started a kind of a motivational life company and do some talking and, and consulting motivational speeches, uh, even written a, a book, but, but so the, my career has changed dramatically and um what, what's been interesting is for so many years i i spent so much time working on other people's kids right that, that's what you do as an educator right you're, you're taking care of everybody else um and good bad or different i think um my kids sometimes suffered um they didn't get dad all the time dad was out a, a football game basketball game or play whatever um, supervision um, and so over this, it hasn't even been a year yet now, but 
um, we're trying to make up for a lot of lost ground. And, um, so I, I get to, I get to take, uh, uh, Andrew to school. I'm in the, you know, the, the pickup line, drop off line. You know, I used to help create those, you know, as a, uh, as a principal and superintendent, and now I'm in the middle of it and, um, uh, getting to go to my oldest son, Jack, even though he can't do contact sports, he, he was a kicker on the junior high football team. Uh, he kicked the ball and then run off the field. Um, uh, but I could go to all the games. And so uh, although cancer is insidious and relentless, I, I don't have a lot of good things to say about it. There have been some positives because it's allowed us, um, we say our, our life stories are made up by our whys and our why nots. And it has forced us to recalibrate and, and um, make the most of the time and, and uh, to focus on opportunities that, that probably would have gone by the wayside because I was always focused on work, you know, the next thing. And uh, so if cancer can be a blessing, it has, it has allowed me to eyes wide open, go, I'm going to spend our time on our kids, on my wife, uh, on my family, on my friends, when maybe sometimes in the past, unfortunately, uh, I had neglected that. Yeah, and I I know career and when when you get really involved, especially you get to that level of superintendent, like <laughs> you you want to be there all the time, and like, it's it's a love for your work, your love for your schools, and and everything like that. And I'm glad that you are able to spend that time with them, and yeah, make up for lost time, but you, you can't make it up. But you can definitely get, gain some extra time, and that's. That's definitely a great thing to hear. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, actually, we're we're, we're uh, uh, we are we kind of understand my trajectory, so we're, we're making the the most of things. Um, and uh, um, get yeah, if there's if there's been a blessing, there is a blessing with with uh, this illness is that it it's allowed us to refocus on, on really what what are the most important aspects of life and uh, being a dad, being a husband, being a brother, being a son, you know. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes uh, the people that we're closest or are closest to, uh, we put those on, put them on the back burner because they'll understand, right? They'll, they'll understand that I have to go to work. Or they'll understand that this phone call is coming at 10 o'clock at night and I've got to handle a situation. Um, they'll understand. And and they do, uh, but they don't. There, there's no way to fully understand the complexities of the position. And everybody wants a piece of you. And, um, I, and, and as a dad, we want to get, we want to please everybody. We don't provide for everybody. Um, I think we're geared internally that, um, so the way we provide is, is grinding it out and, and, you know, putting food on the table and our roof over the heads. Uh, sometimes that means doing things, for work at odd, odd hours, just doing what, whatever we have to do to provide for our family. And, um, uh, still trying, uh, a little less income, a lot less income. Uh, but we're still trying to provide for our family. Yeah. And you want to go into your book at all? I appreciate your, you know, mentioning it. So if you had asked me, I was a kid in high school, are you going to write a book? I would, I would have laughed, uh, right at you. So my wife, um, uh, was an English teacher and she wrote a book, um, now two years ago, uh, she wrote a book on teacher trauma. So she's really the talent. Um, but we wrote this, co-wrote this book together. Um, we created this idea in this company called Broken Shells. And the idea is that we're all perfectly imperfect. We all got stuck, whether it's cancer or depression, diabetes to divorce, you pick it. We, we've all got something. And uh, my, my journey right now just happens to be cancer. But So the book is called Broken Shells, a perfectly imperfect journey through cancer, leadership, and, and love. Uh, so kind of chronicles what we've gone through over the past couple of years and uh, uh, some of the challenges that, that we've we've tried to face head on and and not any more difficult or important than anybody else's challenges. Um, it's just here's here's what we uh, have gone through and maybe some interesting angles that that uh, uh, you know life's been life's been very hard for everybody over the past three years. I had some interesting beginnings. My, I began my career as a superintendent um, in the middle of a school year and transitioned from one position to the next. So I began on March uh, 10th, or excuse me, March 2nd uh, of 2020. Uh, 10 days later, uh, you know, <laughs> my, the world. My so, uh, you know, the, we've kind of just been 
in one whirlwind after another, and I, you do not get used to it. And maybe you don't, I don't get as overwhelmed now when it's the next thing. It's just, mm-hmm. all right, we, what, what else added to the pile or we'll, yeah. we'll handle it. Uh, so the book, the book, you know, again, talks about the, the, the journey of cancer and, and, uh, uh, maybe give some insights on some things that, that cancer, um, patients probably don't have a chair before, you know, what, what, what it's like, to, uh, uh, to be scared to death and what it's like to have people care for you and, and, and cancer scary. And, and we lost some friends, uh, over this because I, I think it was too overwhelming for them and, um, they just kind of tapped out and, and there's a, there's some emotional aspects you got to go through with that people that you thought were going to be in your corner that aren't or weren't. And, uh, and then all of a sudden people, you, you had no idea were in your corner show up and, and provide blessings. And, um, uh, the leadership component we just talked about, uh, or I talked about, you know, what, what's it like to lead during chaos? Because, you know, that time period from March 13th on, fr- Friday, March 13th is when we shut down the school district and nothing ever was was the same. And uh, uh, it, it's fun to lead when the waters are calm. Uh, it, it's a little more challenging when the current is a little more uh, wild and woolly. Um, so we talk about what it was like to, to lead during COVID and what it's like, you know, even now when, when the, the challenges hit, how do you, how do you maneuver? How do you prioritize? And, uh, and, and then what not to do, uh, cause I, I did, a, I made a lot of mistakes and, um, uh, do you want to be real successful? Here's a list of don't do these things and you're going to be great as a leader. And then the love aspect is simple. Um, I love with my wife, but also love with my family, love with my friends. Um, and we talked about being a dad. Um, we did a, in this book, we did one chapter, which our boys, um, they wrote a chapter in essence. Now they talked, um, and, and we typed, you know, what their words were, but we asked them questions. What was it like to watch dad? Um, what was it like to go through this? I lost 65 pounds in the process and I wore a big bulky sweatshirt on purpose because I, I have come close to gaining it all back. Uh, you know, so for the eyes of a, at that time, a 13 and a six year old, uh, watching dad deteriorate plus COVID plus everything else going on in the world. Um, they've gone through a lot and uh, we wanted them to be able to share their voice as well. So, um, you know, it, 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 this book may end up just lining bird cages. I don't know, but, um, uh, it, it, it's been fun and kind of, um, uh, an ability to kind of ha- have some putting some trauma to bed by, by creating this. So it goes in prayer. Um, we're, we're talking tonight on Thursday. It goes in prayer tomorrow. So it's, it's pretty cool to say, uh, I wrote a book. Yeah. I <laughs> mark it off the list. You know? Yes. Sir. That's, that's, uh, that's amazing. I think it could be relatable to so many people. I mean, you know, you, you, for the leadership, you know, you lead your family for all the, all dads listening. And then, you know, we all know someone that's gone through cancer or, you know, battled it and it's it's tough all around no matter you know what it's father son parent and uncle grandpa parent it's just it's it's difficult all around and i'm sure that chapter with your boys was you know real eye-opening and um great to hear as well because that's something like you normally don't ask <laughs> and I, I that's one thing like we like talk about like, ask the questions that you wouldn't wouldn't ask <laughs> you know Try to actually talk about other things than what you do today. And I, I look forward to, you know, hopefully being able to read that soon. We'll definitely include that HUD a link uh, once that comes out. Thank you. For, I for everybody. Um, so what kind of led your family into Indiana? Did you grow it up in Indiana, Indiana or was it yes. just a school job? <laughs> uh, no, yes, sir. Uh, been here my whole life. Um, we live in Brownsburg, Indiana, right here in central Indiana. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, uh, I was never, I'm still in Browser, Indiana. I was never going to stay here, right? You know, the 18 year old, we're going to go out, conquer the world. Uh, and, and this is where the roots have ended up being. Um, my parents were both educators. Um, and so this has been home. Now, I, my jobs have taken me to other places, but everything has been in state. And uh, um, as, as appealing as the beaches are, and I would love to have that beach mansion, I, I guess Indiana's home and uh, uh the the 500 is what 15 miles away it's not quite the beaches of uh, 
wherever Pensacola or, or you know somewhere somewhere beautiful but um you know yeah. central indiana's home and, and i guess will always always will be but yep you kind of know this town's an indiana town <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah yeah i i think uh, i'm sure you as well as we age we get friends that have, that have moved here to indiana from other locations we have a, a neighbor that, that have, we've met become close to now uh, they moved from from california um, one of my good friends is a college coach out in California, and and the, their stories are really intriguing and, and fun. And it's a little bit it's cool to hear some of their exotic stories, and and then it's nice to go. But I'm glad I I wasn't there, and or I'm glad I'm not there. You know, or some of the challenges in, in different parts. Um, now, it, now, if someone might offer them a place in Hawaii, we might rethink Thanks. things. You know? <laughs> that is <a> very true. <laughs> is there any interest, kind of? Outside the family, I know you've written a book and you've coached, but like, is there any like personal things you kind of enjoy as a hobby wise or kind of on your own? Kind For of sure. Um, it, I've, I've got to figure out a, a strategy. Uh, I was an old meathead. You know, I was an old football coach. So, so I was a weight room guy, you know, and I enjoyed lifting weights. And uh, I, you know, I lost everything. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say everything, but you know, you, you have that ego, I guess, you know, and it was shattered because your body is gone. So, mm -hmm. um, putting this body back together, it will be a challenge and there's, there's probably a cap on what, what is, is capable now. Um, but the reality is maybe I don't need to lift as much weight as I used to, or, or, um, be as large as I used to. And, and by no means was I a, a bodybuilder or, or, uh, uh, incredible hole who just um, tried to maintain an athletic physique and it's gone and and that's okay because i'm still here so i i think one of those personal aspects i've got to figure out is, is um how do i put this body back together to a place to a place where um i'm not worried about the aesthetics i'm just worried about maintaining the health to the best of my ability because um right now we're at um, we're, we're kind of, I call it the, the eye of the storm, right? Everything's kind of calm. Mm -hmm. uh, the storm's got to return. We know that. Um, so I want to build up as much as I possibly can. Um, so I, I think going back mentally, getting back into the grind of, of, of lifting and weights is something that, um, I look forward to. So I guess my, my hobbies have been pretty, pretty narrow. I was a football guy my entire life and, and uh, a meathead. So. <laughs> My wife says I need to be a lot more cultured than I am. <laughs> if you were to give advice or what advice do you like to give to either new dads or dads going through rough situations or something you've been through, what, what's your like best advice like, you like to give out? So what we've been going around and talking to, to schools and, and uh, businesses about, I said, uh, our life stories are based on our whys and our why nots. And so my advice to people is, you know, you hear the phrase, you know, live your wise, you know, your, your wise or, you know, and that phrase, I, I don't think it's overused. I think it's important, you know, for, especially you know, this, this show, our, our wives are our kids, you know, our, my wife is my wife, that's my family. Um, for some, it's gotta be your career. If you're not a dad yet, you know, your, your, girl, your wives are important. And then when I tell new dad, old dads, your why nots are just as important. And the why nots are those crossroad moments in life where you have to decide yes or no, I'm going to do this or I'm not. And absolutely, there are some things you shouldn't do. <laughs> you know, if, if, the, if it's a moral dilemma, should I rob this bank? Well, no, the answer is pretty simple. But uh, if, if the question is, I see this lovely person across the room, male, female, wherever you are, you know, um, do I go talk to them? Do I go ask them out? It's a why not moment in life. And, and uh, that's how I met my wife. You know, it took a chance and uh, asked her out on a date. And I had no idea why she said yes, but she did. And and now here we are. And uh, the why nots can be can be real simple. Uh, tell people there's there's no food police. If you want to eat your chocolate cake first, eat, eat the chocolate cake first. Why not? Uh, you know, when you become a dad, uh, you know, it, it, here's an example that we've done as a family that we probably would not have done, 
um, until this change of our life, um, getting sick. We're, we're a big a Christmas story house family. You know, we love that movie. And, uh, we watch the marathon, right? And it comes on. Well, you can actually go to the house where part of the film was made in, in Cleveland. And you can actually stay the night in the Christmas story house. And we've done that. It was, it was, wasn't inexpensive, but, you know, like a fancy hotel downtown tw- times two. Uh, we've done it. Why not? You know, so those moments, uh, I'm not, I'm not suggesting as a new dad or, or a seasoned dad, don't, don't go through all your life saving, but, but what are you waiting for? What are those moments uh, that you, you're going to, you know, do or not do? Um, it could be as simple as uh, I'm going to leave work early tonight to go to my son's game to see all seven innings or five innings of a little league game, whatever it might be. Um, so that work's still going to be there. But why or why not? I, I think those are the moments that are going to define your life trajectory. And what I hope people don't do is when you get to the stage where you may be in some situation like mine, where you have to look back on some of the why nots that are, that are over and you can't go back and you can't adjust it and you can't fix it. Um, all you can do is work on the moment now and, and make the best of your why not opportunities. Uh, that's great. I've, I haven't heard that before. And that's just some great advice. I know I, I, I don't put it in those terms, but like one thing I've mentioned before is like when you look back when on your childhood, when you try to think about, you know, you're growing up, you don't, you don't remember the just sitting there watching TV as much as you remember the trip you took or, you know, even just going to a, a random restaurant you've never been to before or just things like that can really change, you know, your memories and just the, your you know, feeling about family and everything you did. And that's, that's a great way to think about it. Uh, awesome. Yeah. I, I, you know, isn't it funny that that old movie, not, uh, the first vacation, you know, everything, everything was a memory in uh, uh, that they made. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, hysterical moments, but uh, uh, just as you're saying, you know, they got the family truckster, they headed out west and everything. They made memories. Uh, I, I, I've had my fair share of hospital stays. I, I'm pretty sure that I should own a wing at St. Vincent's Hospital in Indianapolis. Uh, but I, I, a long time ago, one of my nurses told me this and said, John, you're just making memories. And, and right, that's what we do with our life. And I, there's nothing wrong with, with a family sitting around and, and watching a show together. I think it's that, that's bonding. Um, uh, unfortunately, or depends on your take on it. Technology has changed. Now you'll see families all in the same room, all on their own cell phone and, and not engaging. You know, they're in their own little world. They're in the same space, but they're not. So the opportunity to watch a show together that we, we grew up doing, you know, cause we had the what, three or four channels on uh, TV. I know I'm old. I, I, those wine dots are, are fine. Those, those making memories are, 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 are still precious to me. I was the TV changer. There were no remote controls when I was little. Never get up and change the channel, John. Um, and if I remember that, if you ask a kid today, is there a special memory of changing the channel? They'd look at you crazy, right? What do you mean? Where's the remote? Uh, holding the rabbit ear just sideways so you could get the IU basketball game on. Uh, you know, those, those are memories that, that uh, I'll, I won't forget and I'll treasure. Um, and probably much more meaningful than, uh, than taking an all-resort trip somewhere, which we never did, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, to end with kind of a more fun question, uh, who, who do you like maybe look up to or like the best as a TV or movie dad? I know you mentioned a couple, but. Oh, oh, that's a cool question. Um, uh, look, I, I, maybe I, uh, well, there's everything I date myself, but I, you know, cause we roll these out. Michael Keaton, um, shoot the, the, the movie dad. Mom? Yeah, a- yes, yes. I'm sorry. The, the, uh, chemo fog is real. I apologize. <laughs> oh, no, I get it. Uh, but, you know, Michael Keaton trying to be a, the, the dad running the house and finds out how absolutely oh. horrifically difficult it is uh, to run the show. 
Um, but everything was done with love, you know, now you can sit back and go, man, that's funny that everything was done with love and trying to do the best for his kids. And uh, I can still remember a scene where he's stapling the, the blanket that got ripped up and I might have not used the stapler. It might've been duct tape, but I, whatever you got to do as a dad to get through the moment. And I, I think that's, uh, that, that's a, that's a cool memory you just brought up for me. <laughs> yeah. That, there's always those, those ones where you're like, oh, I always thought that was a cool part of it. If you feel growing up when. Like, I want to be like that guy what yeah. saying when, I, when I'm a dad. Well, John, uh, it's been great talking with you. Uh, definitely keep us updated on when the book is actually released and everything. We want to send that out to everybody. I appreciate uh, it. Thank let you. them know that because that seems like something that we could all learn from. And just thank you for sharing your story and your advice with us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, just blessings to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, John. Again, I want to thank John for joining us. Broken Shell, his book is, we'll have a link to the pre-order out. Take a chance. Go check it out. There's so much more that we can learn from John and just from other dads all around. And daddy thank you for joining us. This is the kind of information we want to give you. We want to reach out to other dads and have you here. We want to tell you stories about what's going on, give you advice, tell you about local happenings around town. This is what we're here for. We would love for you to be a part of it. Leave us a message at IndieDadsPodcast.com. You can leave a voicemail or even an email there or directly email us at IndieDadsPodcast at gmail.com or connect with us on our social media Indie Dads Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We're excited for the growth we're having. We're excited to bring you this information that we can grow together and learn together. Because a dad's work is never done.